Uh, today we have a special guest uh, joining us, uh, Zoe Rodriguez, a junior at Waltham Public Schools, who recently won the New York Times 100 Personal Narrative Contest. And uh, we have her on today to do a reading and then a short interview. Do you see it? My mom asked, confusion twisting her face. I looked at it, the paper bag sitting on the kitchen counter. The sharpie lines absentmindedly sketched, branches evolving from a broad trunk, intertwining into intricate limbs. Not a handout or a stencil from grandpa's aphasia group, just his tree. I squinted in the kitchen limelight and saw it. The gaps, empty spaces between branches, subtle but severed. The right hemisphere remained intact. The left, paralyzed after the stroke, detached. We stared at his sketch, wondering if he drew his brain or if his brain drew a tree. Really is a beautiful story. Thank you so Thank much. You for that. So your story, as well as the drawing, um, it feels like a true story. That might not be the case, but but is it? And uh, can you tell us the story of the story? Yeah, it's a true story. Um, my grandpa had a stroke about 10 years ago. He was paralyzed in half his body and he has aphasia. So he lost his speech ability. Um, and one day my mom and dad took me into the kitchen. They showed me this drawing that he made. And it was just of this tree. And I was just taken aback because it's really gorgeous. It's, it's so detailed and it was so flowy. And especially for someone who can only draw with one hand. And my mom was just like, do you see the gaps in, in the tree? And we were all sort of taken aback. And I remember we all just like stared at this paper bag for like a good 10 minutes, just like wondering, was this on purpose? Like, did he make these gaps in the branches to like illustrate his experience? Like express this loss that he felt or was it like subconscious like the back of his mind like making him make these gaps without him even realizing they were there um and it, it stuck with me it was a moment that really impacted me i i thought of my grandfather differently after that and i think the moment i saw this this product for the contest i like automatically thought of that moment um and i was just like asking myself like am I brave enough to tell such like a vulnerable personal story that's beautiful that's beautiful uh how has your grandpa like the reception of this piece I mean he can't really have much of a reaction but I think when they were showing him like that his drawing is in the New York Times mm. it's 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 impressive and I think I think he really <laughs> got a kick out of it which is great it's wonderful. Um, so through Google searching uh, your name, we stumbled across several of your writing pieces that are online. Um, I was impressed by uh, how um, natural a lot of your writing felt. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your relationship uh, with writing? How long have you been doing it artistically and uh, what inspires you to write? I've been doing it for like as long as I can remember really. Like, since I was really little, I'd always like write notebooks and just, it's like a way of creatively expressing myself. And I think um, I, I think it's a way to like connect with people as well. Like after I write with someone, sharing it with them and they're, seeing their reaction is always really rewarding. Um, and I think like in terms of inspiration, like getting my ideas out has always been a really big inspiration, creating a product that I can like be proud of. Um, and I think I'm in a creative writing club. That's that's been an inspiration. I, I believe online it says you founded a creative yeah. writing club. I, I think you should give credit where credit is due. <laughs> yeah, um, that that's been a really cool experience because I just wanted to like show people that it can be for yourself and not always like about assignments and stuff because writing has this like connotation where it's like ah, it's like for grade and all that. Um, but I just wanted people to like connect with them for themselves. 
And I think a lot of your writing um, speaks to that, uh, which leads me to my next question. Um, you wrote a piece for the Talent Tribune about being bilingual in the Waltham High School. Waltham has a very diverse student population. Do you find it inviting to the many different cultures uh, that are represented within the student population? Are there ways that we can improve? Yeah, I think it is inviting. I think it's always been a, a source of pride for Waltham High that we're so diverse. It's It's really a privilege to be part of a community where people come from all different backgrounds. And we have like a bunch of different clubs like uh, LSU, the GSA, I'm part of Best Buddies. And there's there's a lot of different opportunities to just connect with people. And I, and I appreciate that. And there's always room for improvement, but I think I think we're doing a good job. Wonderful. Um, and my uh, last question, uh, do you have any thoughts on your future aspirations as a writer? Yeah, so I, I'd love to do something in creative writing when I get older, like being a, being a novelist or being an author would, is like my absolute dream. I would love to do that. Um, maybe like a career in like technical writing or editing, something like that would be really cool. And just, I don't know, through this experience, Everyone's just been so, so nice. I've gotten like a flood of messages from the community, people I don't even know, my friends, my teachers, my neighbors, and the support means everything. Well, uh, we're glad to have you on the show. We're glad to have your message go across a wider audience and uh, you deserve all the praise that you're getting. Thank so, you so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming on our show. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity.